Hi, I'm Gary from Martin Leach and & Sons and today I've got something really quite interesting. This is a SAT rotator controller. This is from CSN Technologies. I've got it hooked up to an IC9700 and I'm using the, this has actually got a built-in web server and I've actually got the um, basically Google um, the Chrome control in it. Now who's this for? We've all seen, I think, people working satellites with a handheld antenna system that they're waving around in the air while someone's trying to make a contact with them. But this is a, a, an automated system that allows for tracking of, you know, of amateur satellites. It's a really, really cool system. It uses the very, very popular G5500 from Yesu or other rotators. There is a list in here that, that it will connect to and also the very popular 9700. It will support various other radios. Again, look at the documentation, it will give you what it will support. Um, and the unit itself is very, very small. But let's say this would make tracking satellites an incredibly easy and very comfortable sort of situation where you can, you can basically track satellites from the comfort of your shack. This would be on a mast outside or maybe a tripod on the, in the middle of your lawn and you would have a pair of some form of Yagi's or maybe even just a one, what, whatever really. Whatever you've got, this is quite a versatile system. When you get this unit, you, you basically plug it in, turn it on and it starts to broadcast its own access point. It will give you an IP address here along the front of the screen. What you then need to do is take your laptop and with the Wi-Fi is search out the access point this will do and it, it comes up as CSN Technologies. Connect to it, there'll be no internet connection, but what you need to do is type in your search in, in your address bar of, of Google Chrome or whatever browser and then uh, just type in the IP address that is displayed on the screen and that will bring you to this page. Now what you need to do from this point on um, is if you go down to the bit where it says um, network and um, if you click on the network connection here what you then need to do is search for your home Wi-Fi and then put your password in and then just say connect and once that's done then the unit will shut down and then connect to your home Wi-Fi at which point you can reconnect your um, laptop to your home Wi-Fi and the new IP address will be displayed on the front of the screen here. You just type that in the address bar and you come straight back to this screen. This, to be honest, was one of the easiest setup devices I think I've ever come across. It's very, very straightforward. So from that point on, we need to do some basic sort of setup. And I think, um, first of all, I think we've got to go to um, location. We need to give it our call sign, um, in my case, M0TIG and our grid, re grid reference, which I think is IO91TJ, well, it's close enough anyway. And that will then give us um, a, a location for the software to work against. We can also, if you want to, put in your QRZ login details here, and you can do some other sort of basic settings, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I've just put the essentials in, and I'm just gonna say save. Once that happens, we then get this, um, we, we're still sitting at the same sort of screen. We need to tell it what rotator we, we, we've got and we've got to then run into some calibration things. So what we need to do is we say the rotor and in our case, it is the Yesu G5500. The rest of this I've left pretty much default. I haven't played with anything. I've not, I've, I don't really understand it. Again, go back to the documentation. It's really, really good. Once all that bit's sort of set, you've, you've picked the rotator, you need to then do um, an auto calibration. So run the calibration, this will go 360 um, in each direction, and this will go 180 in each direction. Then it will come up with just say, do you want to save those settings? And you say, yes, save the rotator settings, and you can close. The next thing we're going to need to do, if you've got it hooked up to a radio, and I hope you would, because it looks after all of the Doppler shift and all that sort of good stuff, is you need to go into the radio sort of section. So we'll quickly click into that. And here you can see that I've selected IC9700 and given it a board rate of 19200. The rest of it I've left pretty much um, blank. The, um, the CIV address or CI5 address is A2H and I've left everything else um, as, as it is really just for, for simplicity. And then you can say save the radio settings and close. Now the radio itself, um, I've got to do this carefully, I was, Henry's camera goes out of focus, but if I press 
the uh, menu um, button here and then go over to settings I've gone to connection so sorry Henry I have to um, and then I've gone to CIV and then I've set the board rate of 19200 and the CI5 or CIV uh, I, um, address as A2H the rest of it I've left pretty much as is so let me get back out of that now theoretically these should be talking to one another so we can test that what we can do is here um, actually I should also say the second part of, uh, of a little bit of calibration so what we'll do is if we set this to search for the sun pointing at me um, what you do is you loosen up the bracketry on the on the base of the the rotator and the antenna and what you would do is you would move this now until it's actually pointing at the sun or the moon so you can search for the sun or the moon once that's done you tighten everything up and you now know that this is calibrated physically and electronically because we've done done both both things then what we can do is again we will go back to what the radio was doing so we'll search for say q 100 which i know is is probably on the agenda um, there you go there you go now that is looking to track q 100 but you'll notice here um i'll use the pointer um four three uh, seven four eight five is the sort of uh, frequency that center may be and you'll notice that the radio has changed to somewhere near that. Now the, the software and, uh, is telling the radio a different frequency because it's doing some calculations for you. And this is one of the really neat things about this. This will alter the radio uh, frequency as the satellite is passing because they, they, there is a little bit of science behind that. And it's a really interesting read as well. So um, all about that stuff. So the radio is now following the software. The software is telling everything, you know, what to do and looking after this. The rest of it is basically up to you. Now, what about if you were in, in an area you don't know what's, what's going overhead? You can actually then select next passes. So we'll, we'll click on that. It takes a little while to think. And what should happen in just a few seconds is a uh, screen pops up. And then we get a, a screen here, which then comes up with the, um, the next bunch of passes. And you can see there are a few green ones and it gives you the times and um, lots of other information about it. Um, I believe we can, um, yeah, we can just, I think there's some information to be had about it. So you can look up from that, that little link, you can look up um, some information and it gives you all of that. Uh, by just by tapping on it so I just tapped on that if you want to just track the satellite then quite simply you just highlight over the top and now the the software will load the details up for QO 100 and away you go let's just say we want to track another one we can say view the next passes and let's um and let's just have a look at cube bell and you'll see that the radio has changed And you can see here that the radio actually is just, just changing frequency all by itself because the software is telling it what it needs to do. Um, I think that's pretty much it. This is a real sort of, um, just sort of show and tell really of this, this unit. Um, I'm really quite impressed with it. It was so easy to set up. I don't think it's a huge amount of money when you compare it to sort of something like the, the official Yesu unit, which is still serial ports. Okay, I hope uh, that was uh, that was okay. And if you need any information, then do give the guys a call here at the store on zero three four five two three zero zero five nine nine, or you can look at the website, which is www.hamradio.co.uk. Or if you have any specific questions, then please email sales at hamradio.co.uk. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.